Ram Navmi is the celebration of the birth of Lord Ram who embodies chivalry and virtue and is worshipped as the seventh incarnation of Lord Vishnu. Ram Navmi is held on the ninth day of Shukla Paksh in the Hindu month of Chaitra. Lord Ram is one of the most adored gods in Hinduism. He is depicted holding a bow and arrow indicating his readiness to destroy evils. His story forms the epic Ramayana. Lord Ram can be simply described as a man who displays perfect moral values as well as social behavior. Lord Ram in the words of Swami Vivekananda is the embodiment of truth, of morality, the ideal son, the ideal husband and above all the ideal king. He is a symbol of the victory of right over evil. He is perfect in every aspect and is often referred as Maryada Purushottam meaning the one who is the supreme man. King Dashrath of the Suryavanshi Ikshvaku dynasty was a brave warrior. He was one of the most powerful and popular rulers of his time. He had three queens, Kaushalya, Kekeyi and Sumitra, but no children. The revered sage Vashishtha served as the Kulguru of Raghukul. One day, his wife, Guru Ma Arundhati, approached Vashishtha with a question. Who will succeed Dashrath as a king? He has no children. Vashishtha admitted that he had pondered this himself. Arundhati proposed a solution. Could we invoke Vedic rituals to grant him a child? Vashishtha replied, Certainly, but Dashrath lacks the desire for an offspring. Determined, Arundhati hatched a plan. She visited the queen's chambers with her grandchild. As Dashrath returned from court, he respectfully greeted Guru Ma. Arundhati discreetly pinched her grandchild, prompting the child to cry. Dashrath inquired, Why is the Guru Putra crying? Arundhati cleverly responded, He cries because Vashishtha is your Guru. But whom shall I be the Guru of? You have no children. Suddenly, Dashrath recognized the void in his lineage. Pained by the absence of an heir, King Dashrath invited Rishi Vashishtha to express his sorrow and share his concerns. Seeking a remedy, he asked, Gurudev, how can I have a child? After learning about the reason for his agony, Rishi Vashishtha asked the king to perform the Putrakameshti Yagya under the guidance of Rishi Shringhi. The king, who hoped that his devotion and prayers would get answered, organized the Yagya. He invited Rishi Shringhi to supervise the ritual. Upon the successful completion, Prajapatya Purusha, a heavenly being, emerged from the fire of the sacred fire pit, holding a bowl of kheer in his hands. Pleased by Dashrat's devotion, he then handed over the bowl to him and asked him to distribute it amongst his wives. King Dashrat took the kheer and Prajapatya Purusha disappeared. Dashrat brought the kheer to his queens, Kaushalya, KK and Sumitra. Kaushalya, being the eldest, took the first bite. KK then followed Kaushalya. Then, when it came to Sumitra's turn, Kaushalya and KK, out of affection and love, each took a portion of their kheer and fed Sumitra, symbolizing their unity and strong bond as queens. On the other hand, the devas assembled together and approached Lord Brahma with a request. They stated that a demon named Ravan had been oppressing them and they had been suffering due to the boon granted by Lord Brahma. As per this boon, Ravan cannot be slayed by devas, gandharvas, yakshas, rakshasas or gods. On hearing this, Brahma responded, that Ravan forgot to ask immunity from a common man. Hence, he would be defeated at the hands of a man only. At that moment, Lord Vishnu arrived, clad in yellow robes, 
bearing a mace, discus and conch and riding up Garuda. The Devas paid reverence to him and requested him to take birth as the son of Dasharath for the destruction of the wily and irrepressible Ravan. On the ninth day of Shukla Paksh of the Hindu lunar month of Chaitra, under the constellation of Punarvasu, Queen Kaushalya gave birth to a radiant prince, the incarnation of Lord Vishnu himself, Ram. According to Ramayan, Ram was born at noon. Ram is referred to as Purushottam, meaning the epitome of perfection, the Uttama Purush, fulfilling all his duties both towards his family and his subjects. On the same day, Queen Kekei welcomed her son, Bharat, into the world, who later became known for his unwavering devotion to his elder brother Ram and his commitment to upholding familial and societal values. Lastly, Queen Sumitra gave birth to twins, Lakshman and Shatrugna. Lakshman was an incarnation of Adi Shesha and is renowned for his loyalty and selflessness. To know more about Adi Shesha, watch this video linked in the comments below. Lakshman becomes Lord Ram's steadfast companion and a devoted confidant throughout his life. Shatrugna is known for his valour and plays a pivotal role in supporting his brothers and aiding them in their divine mission in the epic Ramayana. As time flew by, the four sons of Dashrath grew up as models of virtue and chivalry. The favourite of the king Dashrath among them was Ram. Dashrath adored his eldest son. Ram was endowed with the wisdom of the Vedas, was an expert in warfare, was courteous, but it was all his sense of justice that set him apart. When Ram comes of age, he marries Sita, the princess of Mithila. Ram was the first of the four sons of King Dashrath, and hence he was supposed to be the next king. Then it was time for Ram to be made crown prince. Kekei calls up a debt that Dashrath owes her and asks for Ram to be exiled for 14 years and her son Bharat be made the king instead. Ram's wife Sita and his brother Lakshman also accompanied him. In the forest, Sita was kidnapped by Ravan, the demon king of Lanka. Ram and Lakshman travel to Lanka where an epic battle follows between the armies. Ravan is finally killed by Ram, who brings back Sita. They return to Ayodhya, where Bharat returns the crown to Ram. It is believed that if a person worships Lord Ram and Ma Sita on this auspicious last day of Navratri, he gets relief from past life karmas. Lord Ram also brings peace, harmony and prosperity to one's life. Begin the day by taking a refreshing bath and adorning in clean attire. Commence the puja by invoking the presence of Lord Ram through the ceremonial bathing of his idol or image. Bathe the deity with a divine concoction of milk, honey, water and auspicious substances, symbolizing purification and sanctification. Present offerings of fragrant flowers, ripe fruits and delectable sweets at the feet of Lord Ram, expressing heartfelt devotion and reverence. Tulsi leaves or lotus flowers play an important role in Lord Ram or any Vishnu avatar's worship. So offer Tulsi leaves and lotus flowers to show respect and adoration towards the Divine. Fasting is a common observance among devotees on Ram Navami, symbolizing self-discipline, spiritual purification and solidarity with Lord Ram's journey of sacrifice and penance. Abstain from consuming grains and partake in simple meals or fruits, channeling your focus towards spiritual contemplation and inner purification. Engage in the recitation or listening to the story of Lord Ram. It is believed 
that listening to the story of Lord Ram cleanses the soul. Meditating on the noble Ram and chanting his name is believed to ease the pains of life and leads one to moksha. Lastly, Ram Navami is also a time for acts of charity and kindness, reflecting Lord Ram's boundless compassion and benevolence towards all beings. Engage in charitable deeds, feeding the hungry, aiding the needy, and extending compassion to all living beings. Take a moment for personal reflection and introspection, expressing gratitude for the divine blessings received on this auspicious occasion. Offer heartfelt prayers for the well-being and prosperity of all beings, seeking the eternal guidance and protection of Ram.